So let's say that we have a distance of eight kilometers and we want to figure out how many yards that is. So here's our conversion ratios. Do you see any conversion ratios that involve yards? Yeah, so let's write that down. One meter. How many yards is that? Good. One meter is 1.0936 yards. And one kilometer is 1,000 meters. That's right. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. I don't think that was in the cover. That's something you already know. Or maybe that was in the cover. That's something we should already know. Notice that there is nothing there that directly relates yards and kilometers. Right? There are no conversion ratios that go straight from kilometers to yards. So how would we do this? Well, first of all, let's write our starting units. What will be the starting units for this problem? Good, that's right. That doesn't, that, that's, that's right, good. That doesn't quite answer the question. The question is, what should be the starting units? What units are we starting with for those conversions? Kilometer. Yeah, how many kilometers? Eight kilometers. So that's what I meant by the start. So our start is eight kilometers, and now I should write the target units. Yeah. Now what would be the ultimate target units? Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna write down. I'm gonna write down my target units of yards. Then I have to do a conversion. So what unit should I put down here? Now, what units do we have to put down here? Oh, sorry, kilometer. Okay. It has to be kilometers because these are the units that are going to cancel these units here. So it always makes sense to start with these bottom units because we know what those have to be. Right. Now, what would be the ideal units to put on top? Well, the ideal units to put on top would be yards because then we can figure out the answer. But unfortunately, we don't have an equivalency between yards and kilometers. So even though I would like to, I can't put yards on the top. So what can I put on the top instead? Meters? Yes. I could meters on the top. Now I need to put in some numbers. So what numbers can I put in? Uh, one kilometer is a thousand meters. So it's um, thousand divided by meters. So it's one point zero nine three six. Right. The so one thousand goes on the top, and the one goes on the bottom. Again, you don't put in the number one until you have a good reason to put in the number one. Well, now I have a good reason. Now that's nice, but that still is not my target. Meters are not yards. So now we have to do another conversion ratio. Now, what units should I put on the bottom of this ratio? Uh, now we have like 1,000 meters. Right, so let's just take that step by step. So what units should I put on the bottom here? Meter. Because I want that to cancel these meters. I need to get rid of these units. And what units can I put on the top? Yeah. Now I can put those on the top. And then what numbers do I put on the top and the bottom? On the top uh, is 1.0936. Right. Bottom is one. Right. So now this is a multi-part conversion, and that's really common in chemistry. In chemistry, it's very common to have three or four conversion ratios in a row. And the best thing is to set up everything before you do any calculations. It's best to write them all down on paper and then do all the calculations together. Mm -hmm. So what calculation do we need to do here? Eight times 1,000 divided by one times 1.0936 divided by one. But we can really ignore the ones because they're not going to change anything. So let's try that on the calculator. courses, but also in, in, uh, in the actual lab work, you're always having to do these unit conversions. Uh, so it's very common to have to do more than one conversion in a row because you might not have an equivalency that is exactly equivalent between the two units that you want. So you might have to put a bunch of equivalencies together. And the best thing, again, is to write all of them down before you do any calculations. And that way you can tell if you're making mistakes. Again, in every ratio, we always start with the bottom unit. The bottom unit is obvious because it has to cancel the previous top unit. This bottom unit was obvious because it had to cancel this previous top unit. 
then we put in the top unit, then we go to the equivalency to figure out the numbers. In this case, we happen to have a one on the bottom and a one on the bottom, but there's not always a one on the bottom. You have to figure out where they go. Okay, good. Uh, all right, so that gives the basic idea for unit conversions.